Okay, shall we? Yes. In three. Oh no, not a finger. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adam. I'm Daria. Jasper. We all, uh, which camera am I looking into? Uh, any, I think, um, most, this is the, your... This is the Adam camera? Yes, yeah, the Adam oh, camera, and that's, so and that's everything. that's so slouchy, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> just me. Shit, like, okay, yeah, I yeah, should, yeah. I know. Nine hundred and fifty-three minutes of content. That's wow. sixteen hours worth of video that we've now produced on generally food-related topics. That's my daily social media time, according to my phone. <laughs> that is, that is like, was that eight movies? Or three Lord of the Rings? Yeah, three Lord of the Rings. This is the what's it called? The Eurovision one. The Eurovision weighted voting. But. Neither American or Russian or Thailand are part of Eurovision right now, so... Oh. <laughs> Will we ever? Thailand? It's yeah. Eurovision. Euro. You know but what like, Euro stands for. I know, for. yeah, but like, <laughs> there's, 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 there's no guest country or something? Like, oh, surprise. that would be so nice. Daria found this on her Google map. She said there's a nameless street cart selling what looks like incredible Kanam Jean. I'm gonna try and find it. So while me and Jasper in the Pechaburi video, while we were out exploring for something else, I think we were having like uh, the Kanam Jean with fish, fish cakes. Yeah. Daria disappears. She comes back a few minutes later. She's like, I was able to geolocate a hospital in the background and I found the street car. Pattern cart. on the ground. Wow. I could find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, so the week before. Again, 16 hours per day on social media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple couple of days, a couple of weeks before we did our video on Kanam Jean and we had in one of our, my, one of my favorite restaurants, we had Kanam Jean Saunam. And that was so good. That might have made my list for the top 10 if we hadn't had the S tier version of it in Pechaburi, mm. that plate of noodles with fresh coconut milk, star fruit, I remember was the touch mm. that made that really interesting. Um, it was savory, it was sweet. It was, it was absolutely one of the best things that we've eaten on the channel. It was really good. Number nine, Amin Biryani, which I think was the first restaurant on OTR that we featured twice. And this was on Jasper's list as the highest out of the three of us. I, it's just like the rice was so fatty, so rich. It has like this deep, meaty, umami flavor. You know how like French fries are like fried in like duck fat or whatever? I've never had that. But this is what it felt like with just with rice. And it was incredible. And, and the entire spread of food that comes with it, right? The biryani, the eggplant curry, mm. the yogurt sauce. Ooh. The pickled vegetables, everything all together is, is the reason why it was our favorite lunch spot. Exactly. In I, I, I agree. But I could eat that by itself without the rice, without any of the sauces. I think once we found out about this place, we went there like 10 times in two weeks. You and I actually looked at whether we could rent a house we nearby. We were to Siloam so we can actually be in a walking distance from there. Not going Thai food here, going Burmese food. And if you watch my reaction on camera to the uh, Burmese restaurant that we started that video in, the uh, street cart in Pahurat in Little India, um, the tofu nue, the warm tofu, uh, the, the la peto. They have Mohinga, they have other things, but those are the two for me that are rock stars. That street cart is one of my favorite street carts anywhere in the world. Absolutely one of my favorite street carts in Bangkok. I ate there for lunch today like three hours ago that's where i just had my lunch and you saw me smiling the whole time mm. uh, it was very good it's like 30 40 50 baht per plate yeah uh, it's it's incredibly inexpensive people are friendly it's also interestingly enough you know we've been getting stopped frequently from people now who watch the channel who say you know it's uh, at the isan restaurant that we showed that's that's you know our little favorite kind of local spot for isan told us last night when we were there that their business has noticeably increased since we featured them on the channel that Burmese video is our most viewed video to this point as we're recording this. It's mm -hmm. like half a million views, yeah. right? They don't care. 
Uh -huh. They were so successful. Their yeah. business was so good beforehand. That's the only place that we've showcased that's had that kind of response. Mm -hmm. That the owners are just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Which is great. You know, good for them. They they don't need us. Um, but man, I, I really, really, really love that place. So yeah, why did I pick that? I like to snack. Uh, I like old people. I like <laughs> businesses that are operated by old people. And when it's a snack business operated by old people, that's a win-win. Mm. Well, what do you think that is? What do you think that is? I don't know. Like, again, remember we... <laughs> <laughs> In general, Southeast Asia and Asia is intolerant to milk. And that's the best part, because I am intolerant to milk. So I, if you want to ruin my day, give me Should like... we count how much cheese is in our refrigerator right now? Uh, in what way are you possibly intolerant to milk? Um, are you just trying to, you just trying to be like a woman of the people? Like, In my home area, there's a place called Colonial Williamsburg. You watch people churn butter, you know, like they used to do in the colonial days. Here, that's how they still make the ice cream, not as a show, it's, that's the technique, that's the way to give it that creaminess, is they literally, as she told us, they'll, they'll line the ice and salt along the outside of a wooden bucket, mm -hmm. pour in the coconut milk, and stir until the edges freeze, and then just keep stirring until it gets the right consistency. It's crazy, the method they use to make it. I also like it because it's not that sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> a valid um, point. Valid point. <laughs> Number six is the feast we had with Chris and Steph in our video in Huiquang mm. from the ethnic minority, China's Yunnan province. Uh, the Wa ethnic group. There are Wa people in Myanmar, Wa people in Thailand, but that family is from Yunnan. Uh, the feast, you have to call a day in advance to book this. Um, you prepay. Mm -hmm. They spend the whole day cooking and preparing this for you. And then it is, I don't know how Steph figured this out that they even do it. It's not mm -hmm. something that's advertised. It's, you know, it, on their menu, it's relatively straightforward Southern Chinese food. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. then the food of their family it's just one of the absolute great meals I've ever had. We went there first for Steph's birthday, um, went there again with the two of them, and then we had to find it. We literally built that episode around the idea of filming there. We just had to have that meal. It's one of the most Instagrammable dishes I've ever seen in my life. It's so delicious too. I just love the communal experience of it. You know, like being able to like grab the same things together and just eat it together. It was like, it's almost kind of reminded me of hot pot a little bit in that sense, you know? It would be a good date food, except there's no way the two people could do it. It's like a date uh, food yeah. if you're How going on a date. How would you call food. it a good date food? It's well, like hot the sharing, right? Yeah, like, in front of, on the first date. What one thing I've learned on this Munching channel? Munching on ribs. <laughs> watching myself eat because we have to videotape eating. I've learned that not everything is is good date food. I there was like three or four episodes we did in a row, Jasper, mm -hmm. that were noodle based. Yeah. And I got so just horrified just constantly watching myself eating noodles on camera. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's no way to not look bad eating noodles on camera. Uh -huh. um, yeah, no, you learned that there are some things that look okay and some things that don't look okay. But then people say spaghetti's a date food, so I don't know, what's the difference? That's because of the lady and the tramp, you know, oh. that whole, right? Oh. oh, no, I had to... <laughs> Number five, this was on Daria's list and Jasper's list for top 10. It was one of my honorable mentions. Not a place I put on my list, maybe because this is one of the places that I go most frequently off the air. Boon Lang, Kate's place. Chef Kate, probably our most frequent guest, maybe since we started the show. Uh -huh. um, every time we need, like, if we just need a, a good version of something, mm -hmm. we just call her. Yeah. Yeah. Like whenever we have a, a, a video about a dish and we just need a chef to show us the perfect way to make it, we just call Kate. Um, go ahead. My, my favorite dish from Kate's place was her pad thai. I don't even know if it was on the menu or she made it for a video, but like the springiness of the noodles was like really good. It was almost as if, it was almost as if I was eating like mochi mm -hmm. in a way. It was just so chewy, but it wasn't like too hard to eat and just 
Sour, sweet, salty, perfect balance. You're going to be surprised maybe that this is this high on the list, but when you try it, you'll understand why this is at number four. Something that is one of the two places that was actually on all three of our list. There's only two places out of all, all of these mm -hmm. that all three of us picked as a top 10. Kenny Puffs, the world's best curry puffs. Uh -huh. The world's best curry puffs by a not insubstantial yes. margin. They, like, Jean, the, the artist's tr artistry in the work that she does to make these masterpieces one by one in that tiny little oven every day. What does she make? A hundred pieces a day. That's it. Not more than that. Yeah. Not more than that. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, the, that place is, uh, you can't call it a hidden gem. It's been there for 20 plus years. It's relatively well known. It's but the in fact downtown that, Saturn. Yeah, the fact that they don't have a line to get in mm -hmm. is, and, and other curry puff places. Pooh Curry Puff is fantastic. I love mm -hmm. that one too. I love that. You love that one. I, I, we don't walk past it without stopping. It's great. They always sell out though by like 2 p.m. Well, that's the thing is you used to have to call in advance to make a reservation for Pooh Curry Puff. Mm -hmm. But Kini Puff, you can just walk in. Most of the time, you're the only customer in there. But the level of what they make is on par with the best of absolutely anything. It is, it is astounding how good those are. Agreed? Very much. So now, because all three of us had a completely different choice of our top three, right? I want to go through them one by one. Mm -hmm. So that way we, we don't ignore any of the restaurants that deserve that kind of recognition. Jasper, your top three mm -hmm. out of everything we've eaten on this channel in our how many 953 minutes of video in our uh -huh. 250 plus meals that we've eaten on uh -huh. camera mm -hmm. which those 250 meals represent the best stuff we found off camera mm -hmm. right so the best of the best of the best what's your top three i would for, the only thing i would say before i say that is that my top three is incredibly interchangeable and the only my only like differing criteria for that would be if you were to like Oprah Winfrey, like 10 boxes of these. How happy would I be? That is like, that is like my only criteria for all these things. My third one is the Manalanka spread. It's so good. good. Like, I think my, my top two uh, dishes there was the, the dal, of course, which is featured in our, our curry, curry crawl video. And then um, the, the coconut, like, was it a salad? Oh, yeah. Coconut sambal. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 You combine everything, there is no bad bite. It, there is so much great food in Pratu Nam. Sometimes me and Dario will go to dinner somewhere else in the Filipino restaurants, the Burmese restaurants around Pratu Nam, the Nigerian restaurant in Pratu Nam. And on our way home, we will go to Manhattan Lanka and we'll get an order of coconut sambal to go. And then we'll just add it to whatever we have at home the next day. Uh, that is a so great good. call. Uh -huh. And a place that certainly deserves recognition. I'm mm -hmm. very it's, happy it's that's the, on your the, list. Same, yeah. the same what I say about music, that like after a certain age, it's really hard to get surprised by something new. And I guess like with the coconut sambal, it was one of the first time when we were in Sri Lanka when I was like, wow, this is like, I've never tried anything like that before in my mm. life. I'm constantly surprised by music these days. I don't know what the f I'm listening to. <laughs> you, your music taste hasn't changed since like 1998. That's and you think literally that's like green, exactly true. Green is, Day is still like... They're still a young prime. band to me. That's true. No, they're still... A, I still consider them an up-and-coming band. Like, I mean, I, I just, yeah. yeah. All right. His son is almost my age. Swan, Mali, Kwe Tiao Kwa Gai. I don't and understand why it's nobody else top three. I was Isn't close it the that. best? Like, this is a definition of crack food. This is basically, this is so bad it's good. That's my explanation. There's nothing to say. This is just basically everything you can, that it should be fried is fried, should be, is added, and there is an egg on top, and it's perfect, and it's only 30, 40 baht. It is the most comforting comfort food I have ever tasted. I would eat it like about 100 boxes, as you said. I would eat it, yes. <laughs> I would die in three days because this is not healthy. All right, number three. 
palm curry in Pechaburi. Uh, and again, total experience at that meal. Um, we're in Palm Plantation. There's a family-run restaurant. Um, it's two kinds of curry made with the fruit of a palm tree that we've never, not even never tasted. We didn't even know these dishes existed before. That might not have even been the highlight of that meal. There was the, the shrimp with that sort of peanut sauce. There was the deep fried um, red curry and uh, I can't remember what it was because Daria ate all of it. Was it banana leaves or I don't remember what, what, what it was. Yeah. Something amazing that Daria had. I had one of and then the plate was gone. Um, yeah, that meal was just an absolute all-timer. One of those highlights where you just sit there and you feel lucky as you're eating. You're like, man, this is an experience I'm never going to forget. That was up there for me. Nice. Yeah, the palm curry is actually in my top 10. Like it was, I think it was like seven to eight. It was one of those. It was just that the, the fruit was so interesting. It was so like soft. It almost felt like you're eating pork fat. But you, it but you did a little yeah, bit. Yeah. That's that's true. There was that sort of textural kind of you know. It took a little while to get over that texture uh -huh. with that curry. But to me, again, it's just sitting in the plantation, mm -hmm. having this interesting food that's endemic to only one part of one province. Mm -hmm. And that was just such a cool experience mm -hmm. to me. This is, by the way, Jasper's number two, is the other one, Kini Puffs being one. This one is the other one that actually appeared on all three of our lists, mm -hmm. mine, Daria's, and yours. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot about this one. Mm -hmm. I think it's also top three for Daria as well, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah. For me, it was top five. Mm -hmm. What is it? A hundred Mahasa. Yeah. There's a reason. I don't know what, why, I don't know why it's called 100 Maha sets, but I would give it's, it 100. It's the, it's the address. Oh, well, I forgot about that. I, I would give it 100 out of 100. Should you know? Said something that was my like, joke. I don't know. No, it's literally That's it's how the many address. men they used to <laughs> kill. <laughs> <laughs> to, to like, to sacrifice to food dark. gods. I don't know. What was the best thing you ate there? I have an easy one. Uh, the best thing I ate there was the, the pork belly nam. Okay. That is not just the best thing we ate there, in my opinion. That is one of the best things I've ever eaten. That was shocking how good that was. Oh, Blanca. That's, they're so shocked. They, they're, they can <laughs> like, yeah. That's an achievement, that meal we had at that restaurant. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was literally as a chef. Mm -hmm. I am not that often in awe of what I eat. Very, very, very rarely do I yeah. have something. This is why I love street trot so much, because street trot for me was like, there were a couple of dishes we had where you're just like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, mm -hmm. cool, 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 well done. Chef Chali, almost everything that was on that table was something where I'm just looking at this like, all right, mm -hmm. all right, I see what you're doing. That's, that's, that's next level stuff. That's genius. Great meal. So do you know what crack food is? <laughs> So, number two. <laughs> Should we check Daria's notebook? It was just crack food. <laughs> just this how to spell it. Yeah. <laughs> Businesses evolve and change over time. And remember, this is what I really like the most, that like once uh, some of businesses get famous, they choose quantity over quality. And then they make it more expensive, use of worse ingredients just to have it because of the conveyor right now. Jack Point never changed. So many times that like that we've been there and looking at the pictures from back like 20 years ago, there is still the same child sleeping behind the cooks, like a five-year-old, whoever, I don't know, always. It's five years old for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for like seven years, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it's still the same. And the quality is still the same. The price is still the same. The tools that they use are still the same. It's just like, it's so consistent and it's just so good. Number two, Chef Ga, come on, this guy, the hero of OTR. He is the hero. He is the most asked question on our Instagram, like where, how to find this place. The, his mu crop, everything he makes is good. Remember when Chris from Chinese Cooking Demystified was, was researching a, a different dish. No, he was with us like for one of those times, right? Not on camera, but oh, we, yeah, yeah. We, when Chris was researching a dish, I know that Chef Ga 
can make it. So I brought Chris can like, no matter what he makes, he's going to be making, this is the perfect version. He's such a, he makes all of his own everything, right? You know, for a guy who sells things for that cheap, right? In that humble an environment, the, the, there is no corner cut. And he's just a guy who just loves what he does. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, he's probably the best chef in Bangkok that nobody knows about. Um, I think I'm, that's, I agree with that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, but that mukrab in particular is the reason why he's my number two out of everything we've ever eaten on this channel. That bite, the first bite that I had of his mukrab, his crispy pork with his homemade garlic oh, chili so and good, everything. Yeah. That first bite I had, it was the closest I have ever come on this channel to making the Mark Wiens face to, you know, literally like losing complete control of myself and just, you know. This is the one that I thought I would be the most happy if you were to just give me a hundred boxes of this right now. It is Banca Chao's uh, mango sticky rice. Particularly- I think we learned the name is Mother Sway. Mother Sway, yeah. yeah. Oh, not Twilight. Twilight? Yeah, Sway. Sway. It's Chinese. I don't yeah. even remember. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but like, she was just so good. The, the high for me, highlight for me of that dish was the rice. It's like, separated enough so we can feel each individual mm -hmm. kernel it's like in each grain shocking how good that dish is at uh -huh. that place and it's inconsistent like let's just be completely blunt about this mm -hmm. i cannot guarantee you that if you go you'll have the same experience that we have mm -hmm. because they use local ingredients the mango is local the coconut is made the coconut milk is made by them at that place from local coconuts mm. so there's variability in the ingredients right there's seasonality in the ingredients you really only have two months a year where the mango is just perfect, right? And the rest of the year, they pick out the best stuff that's available. But like, even with that variance, I want that variance. Give me local stuff. I don't want factory processed food. Was there any food. time when you were like, oh, ew, no, I'm not gonna eat it. You ate. I say that sometimes. Yours and mine. And yours, yeah, I say that so that you're like, oh, it's okay, I don't want it now. So I'll just take your plate and I'll have, I'll have both of them. There's an area in Banca Chao, our favorite part of Bangkok, that is, uh, they call it the Culinary Heritage Market. And it's a little back platform behind the floating market in the middle of the island. And it's where they took, there's apparently three vendors who are beloved in that island, multiple generation vendors. And when they built this floating market in 2004, which unlike other floating markets, there didn't used to be one in Banca Chao. There's no like history of having a floating market there. It's a new creation. But what they said was, okay, you know, we're going to take these three famous vendors and we're going to give them their own space and we're going to build this center of culture around them. It is homok, it's uh, green curry, and it's myangkam. With coffee. And, and, with, with, and the coffee <laughs> counter. Right. That cultural center. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's cheap. It's also like 40 baht, I think. For, for a big plate. You for a big plate, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or for like eight, right? Maybe more. Maybe more. So you can also yeah. have it to go. Uh -huh. I actually had it to go. I nice. went specifically for Eurovision. I went specifically to get a, a, a box of it. Mm -hmm. For 80 baht, it's enough for 15 people. There are wow. so many different portions. So like it's enough for a big party, for a wedding ceremony. That's insane. So we're in the countryside along the Thailand-Myanmar border. We're, we have no cell phone service at this stage. We're, we're deep into the mountains. We're just following some random pin. Right before we lost service, I'm just like, we need a just direction to pin to. So I'm just looking for any we restaurants. We lost like three times. We, we got yeah, lost a bunch. Yeah, yeah. We found this pin 
to something that looked like a restaurant. We drove there. It was this lady on top of a mountain uh, with this amazing garden, this beautiful view. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's the mountain where I go to harvest the mushrooms. That's the mountain where I go to catch the wild chickens. This is, And she's pointing out all these different areas where all the food, that's the river where the fish comes from. This time of year, we have the this fish because it's eggs. exactly like it's m migrating. The fish is migrating from here to there. And so that's when we catch these. Every single thing was just from right there. And not only was, and it wasn't, she wasn't just selling us a story because she didn't even charge us for the, the food. Mm. She wouldn't even let us pay. Yeah, she like, like, feels So this was not, this wasn't a sales pitch. This wasn't her trying to put on a show. This is just, to me, like the, not the best meal we've had on the channel. This is top 10 meal, top 10 meal that I've probably ever had uh, in terms of the overall experience and in some of the dishes, the, the volcano egg you mentioned, the the chicken, just that free range chicken. The only times I've ever had chicken that good was, uh, it, it's long stories, but in Indonesia and Yunnan, China and here, that's it, that's, that's it. Those are the only times I've ever tasted chicken that's cooked that well. The mushrooms, which are twice a year, I think they say hand harvested in the mountains there. Like that meal was my number one that we've ever had on OTR. I, I'm gonna say something, a tiny curveball. Actually, my actual top one is not filmed yet. <laughs> yeah, but we ate it. Which is? Oh. Should I say it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we yeah. don't have to use it. Oh yeah, which is the yeah. The one we just went to. Yeah. Would Which be one? your actual number one. Yes. You know, because Ooh. I, I went, I, uh, you weren't there. Right yeah. before we take with Bangkok Pat, we yeah. stopped for a Oh, that's uh, amazing. That's your number one. The reason why is because there's the only place, right? I mean, every place I went to blew my mind, right? But the only place that blew my mind 100% twice. Because I went there for a second day for b -roll. And it still blew my mind. Subscribe to the channel for more from OTR. Thanks to everyone who supports us on Patreon. We're putting up as much new content over there as we possibly can. Check the links below for our website, Facebook, and Instagram. So long. We'll see you next week.